Hey guys, welcome to this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday. Now for those of you new to our YouTube channel, these videos are all about answering your health related questions. So if you have a question concerning your health, health in general, diet or nutrition, herbs, supplements, or really anything that falls under the category of health and wellness, and you would like our help in answering your questions, all you have to do is leave those questions in the comment section below, and we'll be answering those based on popularity, the questions that we feel are going to be the most beneficial to the group overall, and of course the questions that we are capable of answering. Now something else really great about these videos is that every week from that comment section, we select one lucky person to win a free bag of tonic herbs or medicinal mushrooms. So even if you don't have a health question for us this week, but you're interested in winning some free herbs and mushrooms, all you have to do is simply subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, give this video a thumbs up, and then just drop any comment in the comment section below. With that being said, let's get to this week's questions. So looking at our first question, this is a question about emphysema. It reads, can you please talk about the causes of decreasing lung function in someone with emphysema? Despite quitting smoking many years ago, my mother's breathlessness is still getting worse. What food should she avoid? What are the best supplements? All right, so this is a really good question, but before I answer your specific questions regarding what foods should be avoided and what supplements would be best for correcting emphysema, let's quickly talk about what emphysema is and what causes it. So for those of you that are watching, emphysema is a condition of the lungs where the lungs are just really inefficient at uptaking and absorbing oxygen. And at least according to mainstream medicine, the so-called causes of emphysema and lung disorders are smoking or cigarette use, inhaling of tobacco, or inhaling any sort of toxin that may damage or inflame the lungs. So although these may be contributing factors to poor lung health, certainly there's a wide variety of pollutants in the air and irritants that may cause lung damage and damage the lung tissue's ability to absorb oxygen. They're not the major underlying cause was. As the question pointed out, the woman in this particular scenario quit smoking and she's still experiencing emphysema. So this just goes to show you that there are other factors and although the smoking may have damaged the lung tissue and therefore impaired the lungs ability to uptake oxygen, quitting smoking is probably not enough to actually correct the issue. As you pointed out, there are certain foods you're going to want to be aware of and certain supplements that may help and other factors you're going to want to be aware of for ultimately correcting emphysema or any sort of lung condition. So the first thing I'm just going to point out is that there are studies that have confirmed that estrogen can induce emphysema. In fact, one shot, a single dose of estrogen can induce emphysema and reduce oxygen consumption in the lung up to 90% within one hour of the injection. So estrogen is a major contributing factor to any sort of oxygen issues or breathing issues. Keep in mind that is the thyroid gland that regulates our breathing or our rate of breathing and our heart rate. So the thyroid has a lot to do with actually the consumption of oxygen in the body systemically. So if you're not aware of one of the primary functions of the thyroid or if you haven't heard us talk about thyroid health before, one of the major jobs of the thyroid hormone is to deliver oxygen into the cell so that way the cell can can respirate and produce energy. However, estrogen directly opposes this action or mechanism. It not only blocks the secretion of the thyroid gland and impairs the transport of thyroid throughout the body, so it's gonna ultimately impair the delivery of oxygen into the cell, but estrogen itself actually steals oxygen from our cells and induces a state of hypoxia, which is oxygen deprivation in the cellar tissue. So don't quote me on this, but I'd imagine that in emphysema, there's a certain level of lung tissue hypoxia where the cells in the lung are actually suffocating and not capable of breathing. So remember, in order for the lungs to saturate the entire body with oxygen, the lung tissue in of itself has to be able to consume and utilize oxygen. But that won't happen, obviously, if the lung tissue is inflamed or fibrotic, but also estrogen will directly impair the lung cell's ability to uptake oxygen as well. And just as an example to demonstrate estrogen's effect on our breathing, keep in mind that estrogen rises in response to acute stress and exercise stress. So in both of these situations, whether it's some sort of mental and emotional stress or an exercise stress, people tend to run out of breath. 
So typically when somebody is stressed out, their breathing pattern becomes impaired. When a person is stressed, their breathing tends to be more short and more shallow, and in a way they're hyperventilating. Now obviously there are certain degrees of this. Intense cardiovascular exercise is gonna result in hyperventilation and you know really losing your breath and running out of your breath, whereas more mental and emotional stress might result in just more shallow and short breathing. But nevertheless, there's an association here between high levels of estrogen and stress and an impaired breathing pattern or breathing ability. And on a cellular level, there is a more direct causation here where we see that estrogen is actually impairing our cells' ability to consume oxygen. So in fewer words, one of the major contributing factors, I think, to both asthma and emphysema, as pointed out in this study, is that it can directly impair the lung's ability to consume oxygen. So now in terms of solutions, the thing is, is that estrogen is one of these stress hormones that rises or elevates with age and stress. So there could be many things causing an elevation of estrogen that may be impairing breathing and impairing lung function in a person who has let's say emphysema. So that means in terms of treatment or correction, you're gonna to wanna to ultimately be aware of all of the factors that increase estrogen or all of the things that impair your body's ability to detoxify and eliminate estrogen. So we talk a lot about this in our up and coming perfect thyroid course about the effects that estrogen has on the body and particularly how it impairs thyroid health. Now this is important because remember, thyroid is what delivers oxygen into the cell. So this is why you usually see that when somebody is low thyroid, they often have elevated levels of estrogen or the other way around. A person who has high levels of estrogen because they're consuming an estrogenic diet, they're very stressed, they exercise too intensely, they drink alcohol or something along those lines, they tend to develop hypothyroidism because of the antithyroid effects or antithyroid actions of the estrogen hormone. So I think the solution for correcting emphysema would ultimately be to correct estrogen dominance or an excess of estrogen in the body while supporting thyroid function, which are two complementary goals. You usually wanna focus on these things at the same time anyways. So other than the primary goals of lowering estrogen and increasing thyroid function, some special considerations in answering your specific questions in terms of diet, you're gonna to wanna to remove the phytoestrogenic foods, foods like soy, foods that contain other phytoestrogens like lignans, so you're gonna see a lot of the seeds or nuts and seeds, like flaxseed is particularly phytoestrogenic. You're gonna to wanna to remove most grains and legumes because of their estrogenic properties. And one of the big ones you're gonna to wanna to avoid is the polyunsaturated fatty acids, which actually increase the estrogen activity in the body. So they are very estrogenic in their own way. They have overlapping effects with estrogen and can increase estrogen's effect in the body. So oftentimes a diet rich in polyunsaturated fats is a major contributing factor to high estrogen and emphysema is just one of the unique symptoms of chronically high estrogen in low thyroid. So those are gonna be the primary foods that your mom's gonna want to avoid. And then in terms of what supplements would work best, the ones that are gonna obviously improve thyroid function and reduce estrogen, since these are the primary imbalances that are likely contributing to the lung impairment and the emphysema. So there are two herbs in particular that I'd recommend that she could experiment with. The first is gonna be astragalus, which is a wee chi tonic, or it's a lung tonic that helps to improve the function of the lung, and also is an adaptogenic herb. So it helps to lower stress hormones, which would ultimately be beneficial for correcting hormonal imbalances like hypothyroidism. The other herb, which is actually a mushroom or a fungus, is gonna be cordyceps. Cordyceps is another adaptogenic substance. It not only lowers cortisol, which is beneficial to good thyroid health since cortisol deactivates the thyroid hormone, but it also increases the production of ATP, or cellular energy, which is a sign that it's working somewhere beneficially in the mitochondria, which is beneficial to thyroid health, because it's ultimately probably helping your mitochondria produce more thyroid and therefore more ATP, but it also directly increases the body's oxygen capacity or the ability to consume oxygen, acting as a lung tonic also. So I think that those would be two really good herbs, astragalus and cordyceps. In addition to experimenting with these two herbs, I'd recommend checking out the other videos on how to lower estrogen and how to improve thyroid health and get some tips there as well. Aside from these things, it may be worth looking into supplementing with a bioidentical progesterone, which is gonna help to correct high levels of estrogen by opposing estrogen. And depending on the person's health, usually no more than 10 to 15 milligrams of a bioidentical progesterone can help to correct estrogen dominance 
and improve emphysema. In addition to that, it may also be worth considering taking a desiccated thyroid supplement to correct the hypothyroidism and to improve the cell's ability to consume oxygen and produce carbon dioxide. Now my last and final tip would be to consider your iron and copper levels. So iron actually is an anti-respiratory pro-oxidant toxin. It's very inflammatory and one thing it does in terms of impairing oxygen consumption is that it inhibits the last part of oxidative metabolism or cellular respiration which is the cytochrome C oxidase enzyme. So it actually inhibits the thyroid's ability to uptake oxygen to the cell for the production of ATP by inhibiting the cytochrome C oxidase enzyme. Also, at the same time, iron tends to displace copper, vice versa. And copper is actually the mineral that helps to deliver oxygen into the cell via the electron transport chain. So in other words, iron is anti-respiratory by inhibiting the consumption of oxygen in the cell, and copper is pro-respiratory and supports the delivery of oxygen into the cell. So this is a common mineral balance to have too high of iron and too low of copper. I think this is largely due to the fact too that Americans consume iron-rich food foods all the time, but they don't consume enough copper rich foods. So copper is going to be found uniquely in things like shellfish and in beef liver. There is some copper in chocolate or cacao, but it tends to be bound with oxalate acid. So unless you regularly consume shellfish or beef liver, it's likely that you're deficient in copper and have an excess of iron, which is going to again inhibit cellular respiration and the cell's ability to uptake oxygen and to breathe. So some tips here would be to obviously reduce your intake of very iron rich foods and to balance out that iron with copper rich foods. So if you're not a fan of beef liver or oysters, then I'd highly recommend supplementing with Hoshu Wu, which is actually very rich in copper and can be very beneficial. So in summary, emphysema is an estrogen driven condition. It's one of the many illnesses that result from chronic estrogen dominance and poor thyroid function. Since estrogen is anti-respiratory and blocks the pro-respiratory effects of the thyroid hormone and directly steals oxygen from our cells and tissues. The things you're going to want to do is obviously proactively lower estrogen and improve thyroid function through either watching the videos we have on the YouTube channel or checking out our perfect thyroid course. In terms of diet, you're going to want to reduce your consumption of estrogen-rich foods or phytoestrogens, particularly polyunsaturated fats, which are very estrogenic and increase estrogen's activity. And the other thing you're going to want to consider is reducing your iron accumulation and displacing iron with copper-rich foods. All right, guys, that brings this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday to a close. If you're interested in winning some free herbs and mushrooms, all you have to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then just leave a comment or question in the comment section below. Now, before you go, for for those of you interested in learning more beyond this YouTube channel, be sure to check out our online wellness academy. Right now we're doing a pre-sale. There's only a couple days left of the 50% discount on our perfect thyroid course, which is new and up and coming. We also have a couple of other online courses you might find helpful as well. Aside from that, we do have a blog and an online tonic herb shop with free information and resources. And for those of you interested in working more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we also have a Patreon that you can check out. All this information is in the description box below.